Welcome to Wallatopia. We appreciate you being here. Go to wallatopia.info to register. You won't regret it. Remember, Wallatopia is where you go when you want to know anything and everything there is about the world of wallets. And for something new, I'd like to see you go to the interactive side of looking at wallets, which is at, at explore.wallatopia.info. Gives you a nice way to try and find the next wallet you might want to buy. So today, we've got the Harbor London Bifold Wallet. So let's get into it. So this is the shipping envelope that we've received from them. It's uh, quite nice. And let's open it up here. Yeah, let's see. Well, thank you too. Appreciate that. Hmm, with love even. Hmm. All right. And here's the wallet. Nice cotton bag. And here it is. The tan color. These uh, little marks here for magnets for closure. Some of the sewing here quickly. It's a wrap over on the edge. Nice soft feel to it, very pliable. Nice little wallet. Now into the feature review of the Harbor London Bifold Wallet. In the Harbor London Bifold, on the exterior we don't have any particular features, just nice and clean. Uh, we opened it and you can tell that we have magnets. There's a magnet right here and a magnet right here. Magnets are hard to do well in wallets. This one does it very well and I'll tell you why. The reason why this works well is because they're small, they're not very strong, and they're utilized in a very specific place that is not going to have a direct effect on where cards are placed. Now, on the interior here, we have on the left hand side two landscape uh, card slots here that go in this way. And behind that in the rear we have another card slot area and it's got a pull strap here. This pull strap is leather, provides access to usually archive cards, things you don't access very often that you'd put in here. And on the right hand side we have two more card slots and yet another uh, rear card slot space in here for cards, cash, but you do have a billfold pocket. So cash really goes in here. So back here in the back we have a billfold pocket area and we have two unique features. One, you can see this little pouch cover here. This is where you have coins. So coins can actually go here. It's a coin compartment right here in the back. And so it's a nice place to put coins, very reminiscent of the Bellroy note sleeve wallet. And opposite it, very much like the note sleeve, we have a secret card compartment here. It's a vertical placement of a card and provides uh, access for something you just may want to put back there for safekeeping. But other than that, that's a quick review of the features of the Harbor London Bifold. Now onto the card and cash insertion test. As you saw, I got 10 cards in there, five slips of cash, yen, euro, dollars, all worked fine. Three quarters in that little coin compartment in there as well. Minimalist carry probably is around six cards or so, reasonable is 10, really. The company says it can fit 18 plus cards. I would say that that's a lot, but they say they can do it, and I believe it because it is very flexible here, and it has a lot of uh, really capacity uh, potential here. And honestly, even at this, at uh, with 10 cards in it, it's still 
has this wonderful magnetic closure that keeps it together. It, it is really quite nice. Now, from a quality perspective, it's designed in the United Kingdom. I couldn't exactly find where it was uh, produced, where it was manufactured. The magnets really are a nice touch on this and really keeps it closed, even when it's getting thick. It's uh, very familiar to uh, the Bellroy note sleeve, if, you're, if you understand that wallet and what it can provide here. Now, the leather is cut very thin, and it's to achieve the very th the slim profile we have here, and it's done on purpose, and is really something that uh, they're working towards with this particular wallet. And as you can see in looking at the leather, right here you can see where it's very, very thin. If we look at the uh, lip of the coin pouch here. And so this is really a thin cut leather, but it still has some flexibility to it. It has some give, if you can see. And uh, you know that helps by way of capacity and being able to get in so many cards, 18 they say. Uh, but uh, you know it does uh, really come down to a design component of why uh, the leather is cut the way it is. Now one of the things we always like to look at as well is the pole strap here. And the reason why is to ensure that the guide points that are in here uh, right here, we can see that this is sufficient in its size and strength and whether it's reinforced or not to not tear away when this is used, you know, for potentially thousands of times over its life and where it's secured down here in the back. And so it's secured really to the back of the leather this, so that's good. And its guide points right here under this, the rear leather component of the wall is, is really pretty good. It's not too thin and uh, should you know provide good uh, utilization over time. So as we saw there, it does uh, it is made out of the same leather, so it's leather, not uh, fabric based, and it is attached to the superstructure, so it should last pretty well over time. Now it does have rolled edges on this. You can see the rolled edges right here, and it's you know leather comes over rolled here. It is sewn across, and, and you know, the, the really the risk is that this wears out over time. Some manufacturers counter this by putting a painted edge on that to give it some longevity, but otherwise it's uh, considered a, an acceptable acceptable manufacturing method. Now the leather on the interior of the back here, let's look at that, goes all the way back. It goes all the way uh, to the back here and that's not always the case with wallets. I'm sure you've seen them where this exposed piece right here that you can see has leather in it, but once you get past that into the, into the pocket space and the slot space, you'll notice that it then has lining. And so they've had leather go all the way back on both sides, which is a nice touch. Now on the interior of the billfold pocket, it is lined. And this is, uh, this is RFID material. I know, I know, it's, it's okay. It, it, it really does detract from the wallet itself. I, I'd have to say that RFID is a terrible thing, but you already know that for me. And the leather here uh, is over the, the coin pouch is sufficient enough that it will stay in place even if you have a number of coins in there and be able to put cash in and out of here, it's really not gonna interfere with it. It's, it's done rather well. Now the price on this is $106. That is quite a bit. So, you know, you have to decide on whether it's worthwhile to you. It is easy to use. None of the pockets stick when placing or retracting cards. It's, it's uh, the, the design of the measurements, it's really tricky and they've done this very, very well. Now it measures 4.1 by 3.4 by 0.3. Those are inches and it weighs 44 grams. Now from a perspective uh, angle on this, they do have a 30 day return and it has a six month warranty on it. So now let's get into the final score. For quality of three, price of two, features of four, usability of four, and perception of three. That gives us a final score of 32 out of 50. If you'd like to see all the rankings of the wallets we've done, we've told you this before, go to walletopia.info slash rankings, or you can click on the link up here and take you there as well. We appreciate you joining us today. Look uh, at these other reviews and see if there's anything you'd like us to review. Drop it in the notes. We'll speak to you again. Thanks, bye.